<laughs> Disclaimer. <coughs> Let's just get one thing clear right off the bat. I don't have the ability to force the future. Therefore, I cannot confirm nor deny the existence of any future unreleased game. Everything I discuss in this video is purely speculation. News broke about the existence of an upcoming Time Splitters game currently under development. Of course, the details of this new game are unknown. But what is confirmed is the revival of Free Radical Design, the little ambitious boat that smashed into the iceberg all the way back in 2007. The only thing salvaged was unfinished teasers of a Time Splitters 4 and an almost playable Star Wars Battlefront 3. Well anyway, they are back. And not just by name. The boat, unexpected by all, was still salvageable. It's incredible. But what information do we possibly possess about their recent revival? And what new splitter shenanigans should we expect? Well, of course, the information is limited, and anything more we discuss is purely speculation. So why don't we do just that? Speculate. I mean, that's all we can do. Hey. Wanna be in my- First off, the original post that dropped the bombshell. Here's what I read for all of those unaware. You asked, and we listened. We have been working on plans to bring the Time Splitters franchise back to life, and are pleased to let you know that we are setting up a new Deep Silver development studio to do just that. Free Radical Design is reforming and will be headed up by industry and Time Splitters veterans Steve Ellis and David Doak. A series revival, along with the return of an old studio. Could this imply we aren't just going to get a singular game here? In my opinion, and what I theorise, of which I have absolutely no credibility by the way, I think we'll be treated with a possible remaster of the original trilogy and later a completely new game, possibly a reboot. Because I do believe the odds of getting a true sequel to Future Perfect is quite low nowadays, considering the release gap between games would have been almost 15 years. This is some Duke Nukem Forever territory, a game that everybody loved. If this franchise wants to win over a new audience, it's probably more realistic we'll get a remaster of the original games first. One for nostalgia, which in turn would re-energise interest from the old, while being accessible to a whole new crowd of potential loving fans. That way, if it's successful, a brand new instalment could be more of a sell. Think back to the Crash Bandicoot remake, followed up by the sudden release of a true Crash Bandicoot 3 sequel, launching 20 years after the third game initially released. So, taking that as my go-to theory, I started coming up with fun ideas about how a TS4 story could possibly go, and here's what I came up with. Again, this is purely made up fan nonsense coming from a person who doesn't know the slightest thing when it comes to writing a coherent script. Hey, wait a second, what the hell? What if the new game was canon with Future Perfect, but somewhere along the lines the timeline got all screwy, and all of a sudden we're transported into an alternate universe, one where Crow does not create the Splitter Army, and Cortez doesn't tag along with a laser-eating robot. In this new timeline, the Time Crystals were not destroyed, but rather a new foe has taken them. A crow successor, perhaps. Maybe that meteorite will come into play. Or what about a story where the Splitters were in fact the universe's guardians, who were built from the very atoms that manifested the Big Bang, with their one purpose to protect time itself. Do this by keeping it constrained within a singular strand. Anyone who finds themselves in the wake of discovering what the crystals can do will be removed from the current universal timeline, preventing anyone from understanding how time itself can be used as a utility that will become weaponized. Alright, that last one was a bit bananas, but the idea of a future soft reboot is really fun to think about. But moving off story, what about gameplay? Hey, I'm having a break here. Hmm. 
Would a new Splitters game use the older, more golden eye approach to gameplay, or will it be more in line with something like Future Perfect? Personally, I think we'll be moving away from the old school light gun arcade game. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking hell. Personally, I think we'll be moving away from the old school light gun ways of doing things. Future Perfect already showed us the franchise was going into this direction, but what about the modernised remasters, if that's ever a thing? Well, let's look at the TS2 ports and home fronts and see how they tackled the aiming system in there. Well, it's still very TS2, obviously, but with a slight quality of life update, a fixed crosshair. While having the reticle on screen wasn't a new feature per se, this time around, it doesn't make the gun feel all floaty like it does when you activate manual aim in the original. I do believe if a remaster of these three games ever comes out, this would be the universal aiming system. <laughs> Making the jump between TS2 and Future Perfect a lot more easily accessible. But moving on from aiming, I do wonder if a new installment would, quote in quotes, update the movement for the current gaming landscape. <laughs> or would it be a blend of both old school and new? In my head, I think a game like Doom 2016 would be the perfect base for inspiration for how you would update an old school arcadey FPS to appeal to modern trends. For instance, the player never lowers their weapon when moving forward in Doom, because their movement is already set to a sprinting pace. This was obviously a conscious design decision to never interrupt the flow of fast paced, shoots everything in your face. <coughs> Alright, now let's take a dive and talk about what could return in the multiplayer for a new TS game. A new Time Splitters game, I still can't believe I'm saying that. This all sounds so weird and exciting, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's start with the maps. Time Splitters isn't shy about bringing back some old school maps in the later sequels. Streets return from TS1 to TS2, along with Sight and Compound. Training Ground and Mexican Mission both return from TS2 in Future Perfect and Chinese Restaurant was present in all three games. So here comes the fun part of speculation. What do I believe is more realistic in returning to TS4, and what would I personally love to see come back in a new installment that I know is probably not a realistic expectation? Round one. I think Mexican Mission and Chinese are the most likely to return, as I've always perceived them as the face of the Tysler's multiplayer. Now your judgement may vary, and that's completely fine. As I mentioned before, I have absolutely no idea what I'm really talking about here. It's just what I personally predict, and that may very well be an absolute miss. Strike. As much as I love every map from Tysmas 1, I don't think they are nearly as easily recognisable as a map from, let's say, Tysmas 2. And I'm basing this whole, what map will return, theory completely of map recognition and nostalgia. Let's start with Mexican Mission. Mexican Mission may very well be remastered in 4th installments because for one, it was a TS2 map that returned in TS3, both of the two most popular Timesplitters games, with two being the most popular and therefore most nostalgic. The marketing people are trying to get right into your nostalgic little brains, remember. The song that was used on that map has a quarter of a million views on YouTube. That's quite a bit. It's got this crazy open arena outside for madness to ensue. For a potential map to showcase the player again thrown into a bonkers silly game of multiplayer in the fastest way possible, Mexican Mission is the right choice I believe. Imagine if this was the first map they demoed for attendees at E3 with a new rendition of that iconic theme. Alright let's do it, I put plasma on, I don't know what that's gonna do. Fuck you weird, what are you? You're a freak, I forgot.
As for Chinese restaurants, well, I'm just basing this off the map being the only one to survive each new installment. It was an early mission in TS1 as well as a default unlocked map in 2, and then it was brought back into the roster for free. If there's any map for any fan of Tyswiz to remember, it's probably Chinese. Alright, so those were the maps I felt were the most realistic to come back. But now let's get to the more fun part of the video, maps that I don't think realistically have a chance, but I would love to see to come back. Drum roll, please. Round two. Streets. Okay, Streets has a pretty high chance to come back to. I mean, it was the map featured in Shaun of the Dead, and again, its song has like a bajillion views on YouTube. It's definitely one of the most memorable for all of us. So its likelihood is probably quite high. I love this map. I love the atmosphere. I love the buildings you can run into for cover and escape the main routes. It was like a better version of Village from TS1, except Village and Streets coexisted, which was quite strange. Next on the maps I don't think will return, but I would love to see. Yeah, fuck it, Maul. Now I know Maul isn't everyone's cup of tea, but this was a fun stupid map. You had this shopping centre with all these aisles and, well, that was it really. But this map was great fun. I could see a beautiful reimagining of this. Imagine if it was larger, like a full-on Tesco, with staff-only packaging areas around the back, or maybe an outdoor section, similar to Hotel, where they have the lorries stored with the supplies parked out, which could act as a spawn point. Just keep the same theme of shopping mall, but really expand it. It would be utter nonsense to bring back, but I would be all for it. Can you tell I'm actually getting really excited just thinking about a new Time Splits game? I'm getting all riled up, it's amazing! We're living in a world where a new Time Splits game is possible, I can't believe it! I may very well be the only person in the universe who loves these two maps. Chasm is a blast every time. Its narrow bridges, cramped hallways and blind corners were always quite tense to navigate. You would see the infected on the bridge below you, making their way into your base, only to appear on your level in a matter of milliseconds. Oh, by the way, you were a little punk bitch if you ever jumped off this map to survive being tagged when you were totally screwed in flame tag. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Liam, jumping off the side without any repercussions. Anyway, as for Circus, I think it's a matter of execution. The idea of this map is better than the actual map flow in my opinion. It's just a bit too crowded, I always felt, and the circus tents were an awesome idea. Imagine if this 1930s fairground was expanded, larger play space with a massive tent in the middle. Along the sides were small rides or food trucks and maybe a freak show stage that allowed you to go backstage as a way to get out of the sidelines. Maybe I'm biased, but I always loved the atmosphere here. Seeing the small houses planted in the mud, with the brown overcast skies lingering above. Something about an old fairground really hits me for some reason. Finally, moving on to the multiplayer modes. We have the usual suspects here that I have no doubt in my mind would return. Modes like Deathmatch, Capture the Bag, and of course, Virus. But what about the more obscure modes? Flame Tag, for instance. You know, you know, Flame Tag is so great, and it was a damn shame it never made its way into Future Perfect. Instead, we got. Oh well. Oh, and if it ever returned. Can we please have an option where suicide equals automatic infection? Yes, I'm talking to you Liam, you chasm jumping of the map bass. Oh, and assaults, like come on, I always felt assault had so much more potential that was left relatively untouched. <clears throat> I think if an assault mode ever came back, it would be more dynamic with the map, larger AVA battles and more room to be defensive. Let the defenders set up our own turrets around the map or control them via remote control, like an FPS version of a tower defense mode. 
let the enemy team either push the main objective or perhaps have the more strategic option to instead go after the defenses, making the inevitable push for the main objective easier. You could do loads here, and I see massive potential. Even having a spin-off version, where there is a king slash queen on the enemy team who's been randomly assigned, and if they die, the round is lost for the defenders. Protect the royal, like Dozer from Mars Prison, but now he's an actual player who needs to hide and be defended. Well anyway, this whole video was just my excuse to fanboy all over the announcements. Ew. I'm just so excited to see one new generation, bloody hell, what a new, new, new generation of Titans Blizzard is going to look like. Goodness, it's been that long. But what about you, viewer? Any fun ideas you would love to see explored in a future Titans Blizzard 4? Any classic maps you would love to see return? Any game modes you felt were missing from Future Perfect, like... Escort. Oh no because I would love to read your responses. Oh, and let me know how awful my wish list is as well. I imagine it's rather bizarre and truly incomprehensible. Thanks for watching.